everyone. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming on this Friday afternoon to spend your afternoon with us. Um, we are the Berlaga Generation 33. We have been spending um, the week with Harrison and Wood, who have, are hiding themselves all the way in the back, trying to hang out with all of the students. Um, so there are 14 of us in our generation from many different countries. We have been spending the last uh, two weeks doing a whole series of experimenting, working with film, performance, um, space, studying space as well. So I think with that, we are gonna go through a, a few quick presentations and then give really most of the evening to walking around and seeing what we've created. So briefly, I'm gonna start with my group. So there are four groups today. Um, each has a very different presentation as well. So we are going to start with a few words about an experience. <laughs> um, and rather than explaining in detail everything we did over the last two weeks, we're gonna give you a highlight reel of what we hope to carry forward with the assistance of a few quotes uh, from Paul and John as well. So we began with a whole, with two days of working either in 15 minute chunks or two hour chunks to work quickly to make a whole series of films and photos 
I think all of those are on the screen over here. And in those really short chunks, we are trying to get to the fifth or sixth idea, moving past the first idea itself. Trying to have fun as well, stay lighthearted. We're trying to treat everything as an experiment, which meant running around in these suits all week. What happens if you put a phone on top of a door? We also were experimenting with the permission to fail, to try things and see what happens, while also being ambitious. So most of these projects were open-ended, <laughs> um, which meant that it could have a beginning, a middle, and an end, or not. We had a lot of decisions to make ourselves. A lot of trying things out. For our group, we struggled in moments to keep things simple. <laughs> so a few of the lessons learned along the way. We looked at the ideas generated from previous projects. So for our group, this is our working wall, stills from all of the films we had created throughout the first two days of the workshop, trying to figure out, okay, what, what do we like about them? What works, what, does it, what doesn't, and picking them apart. We were looking at those, distilling them, and removing what didn't aid the hook line itself. We also were given the advice, don't be afraid to save good ideas for the next project. You don't have to put all of them in one project. Also to edit before we start, which means for us sketching things out, trying things quickly, as quickly as we can, sitting down and looking at them. Also taking the pressure off, laughing, having fun along the way. <laughs> and remembering what is the hook line, what is the purpose of the film that we're making in that moment, and using that to guide us and help us make decisions. A favorite quote from Paul, minimal effort, maximum return. We also asked them how do they decide things between each other, so working as a pair. Paul said, if someone says no, we don't do it. John quickly added, but the person that says no has to come up with a better idea. So that is the approach that we took in the last three projects, which I'll give you those titles. Those, those are, what, are what you will see the rest of the afternoon. So the first project, we needed to create a film that was a building. The second project is we created a film, no, we created a building that was a film. And the third task is we had to write a manifesto and create a manifestation of the manifesto. <laughs> so those are the series of projects that you'll be uh, walking around this afternoon. For our group, actually our our film is in room K, so we won't be presenting that in this moment, but please spend some time uh, watching the films there. With that, I'm going to hand it over. Hello, everyone. Um, our work is about corridors, and um, we would like to argue that uh, a corridor is its its function is quite obvious, which is its circulation. But um, its use is more of an uh, ambiguous thing. Uh, we use it to move through it, but sometimes we take a pause. Sometimes we dwell in it and certain uh, activities. Um, but we cannot do all the activities we want in a corridor. Some activities are supposed to happen in rooms. Uh, also because you need objects that are assigned to certain rooms before bed. Uh, for example, you have the bed that you have to use 
in the bedroom or a bath in the bathroom. You cannot just take a shower in the corridor. And this idea intrigued us to uh, explore uh, in a certain way all kinds of activities we do in the corridor. Mostly of them are quite normal or small, like small talk or running or getting lost or thing like, things like that. Or sometimes we try to avoid an encounter uh, in a corridor and we try to summarize all these small activities uh, and uh, try to to combine them in a certain way. So, uh, we were looking for a certain decor when we made the movie, and we wanted to uh, make a corridor uh, that was stripped from its specific specificity. Uh, and a way to do that in a cheap way is uh, with A4 paper. Uh, and so, we cladded an existing corridor with these A4s, and then the next thing that would happen is that you get a grid. And then the next question is, how do you use that grid? Um, and we used it uh, in order to emphasize in a certain way the activities uh, we did in that decor. So we experiment with the doors, uh, with the, the windows you have there. And then uh, to continue to our structure, uh, oh, okay, still working. Uh, we took these objects that normally relate to a certain room and we tried to impose it to the, the corridor um, in the sense that they would all come together and uh, to continue that as well is we made these kind of um, these plates you would see in a door uh, when before entering a room, uh, and actually the the the, the rooms, uh, the, the objects claim um, a certain representation of a room, and by imposing them all together in one big space, they conflict again, and and by bringing all these functions together, you would get a, a corridor again. So let's uh, watch the video. Thank you so much.
Hello, everyone. So, a building is a sequence of rooms. Rooms have walls, floors, ceilings, objects, people, and activities that give them a specific character. Putting rooms together forms a building. It creates an edge, an impossible corner. What is a corner? How can it be defined? A corner is a line, the end of a line, a point, a frame. How is the spatial condition of a corner perceived? And how does this perception construct culture and language? From corner to corner, the corner store, out of the corner of the eye. What happens around the corner? How do we interact with them, both the inner corner and the outer corner?
Hello. Rooms have walls, floors, ceilings, objects, people, and activities, and, all, and also have doors. Our, um, our theme is about doors, how it's a connection through space, and how it's a tool that, through, uh, that connects space within memories. So we are trying to portray both buildings in real life, but also buildings as they are in our memory. And allow me to read a poem. Present or absent already. Again and again, or like never before. With a blink of an eye or a deep breath. From that to this. From orchestrated chaos to rotting clarity. From what, you sp what your mind speaks to where your body stands. Is it what you're looking for or what you are walking through? Is it an integral part or a mundane scheme? Do your expectations lie adversarially or have they met in between? Neither that nor this, even if the other side is out of reach. Enjoy the film. So now we invite you to come down, look at the structures, spend some time at them, especially the one in the room cake, which we, they didn't show the video. So I hope you like it.
Would you like to say something about your... Of the video? <laughs> about what we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at um, a corridor to start with, but a corridor that is stripped from its specificity. So it's a corridor completely made of paper um, to think more about the activities that we do in the corridor than rather than how it looks. Uh, we shall walk in it. Okay. So actually, the structure is like a, an extension of the video. And uh, what we see in the video are all these kinds of activities that we do in the corridor. They could be small talk, they could be uh, en having an encounter with somebody. Um, and we try to put them in a stop motion, so to make uh, an abstract version of all these things that we do. Um, and sometimes it can go to the degree that it becomes absurd, these activities. We're looking at, uh, let's say, a, a, a corner of space stripped down to its basics and kind of a uh, way to look at how we use the corner, what makes it a corner to begin with, in a way that you know, we also look at this so we understand what we're looking at. Yeah. Um, so kind of spatial relationships that are possible based on this simple geometry of a corner, right? You want to add something else? Maybe something I missed? Oh, no. Mm. Yeah, well, it's... So how our video was made, um, was taped from the top. This structure replicates how we made the video. So we have the phone. It's supposed to, to be uh, live streaming on the, on the monitor. Um, and yeah, what we wanted to record or, well, to talk about and observe were the different uses of space uh, and the corner by itself, the, either the inner corner or the outer, outer corner. Yes, uh, so this was in um, the first two, two to three days of the master class. We started by doing a sequence of short, kind of 30 minute, 45 minute exercises of quick thinking and how to create films and start thinking in the mindset of a camera, a frame, and kind of what actions can happen uh, in that sense. So this is uh, essentially a composition of all of those moments um, using both uh, photography and video um, to start training our minds to think this way before the big exercise. What are, what are some of the exercises that you do? Um, so uh, I'm not sure exactly which one this one is, but we had some prompts such as um, uh, make a line in a room or uh, something even as simple um, as how to turn somebody around or get somebody down the stairs. Uh, so very open-ended prompts, and we just had to figure out kind of what that meant to us and how to start composing uh, based on that simplicity. Behind the compilation of you can talk about Yes, so um, this kind of composition was an exercise where um, each of us had to start from somebody, some, from somewhere in the building and end up in the same place at the same moment. Uh, so in 45 seconds, which is the duration um, of the film, we got to completely different points, all meeting up uh, in the same space. And this video is from each of our perspectives. Uh, so kind of showing how you can capture the same space 14 different times within the same time 
Um, uh, another exercise that was pretty useful for some of us for our uh, next films. Um, by just uh, <laughs> now, it's pressure. <laughs> um, by just going through the building by using all of these different doors. So you actually like when you're walking through a building, you're constantly moving through rooms through doors. And the idea is that how you experience the building that would be actually would be different because you don't walk at it as you would do in a normal floor plan because you actually have like a route. Um, it's not even on, I think. Um, where you walk through and then you sort of experience the space differently. So it's really nice how it's sort of like actually you can use film to really experience and also look at buildings differently. Yeah. And also the poem is on the back that we read out during the presentation um, on all of them. And maybe to add on to it, also um, the manifesto, which also really talks about this two-sidedness of the doors. Um, we put an example in here, with it, which is this door, where it really talks about the fact that every time you're in front of a door, you're more occupied with the fact what is coming next than where you actually are. So it's really about this duality of the door. So if you uh, get one of these flyers, you can see that there's different places in the faculty where we actually put sentences similar to these, which really trick you and challenge you uh, by in your considerations of the door and the space that you're actually in. Um, yeah, so I would say uh, take a look. I think if you walk through the faculty on the ground floor and the first floor, you would be happy to find uh, all of them. Um, so yeah. So opening the dresser door uh, kind of changed the light quality in the room that we weren't really expecting. And so there is a real simplicity of the composition of what you're seeing, but these certain moments that really capture your attention as well. And so this shot over here, which is taken in the living room, we really were intrigued by and loved the shadow that came in. So there are certain moments that you know, closing the blinds is not an action that's really in front of anyone. You're actually just seeing my shadow closing the blinds and experiencing in that way. But also you capture the subtlety of like the door closing and the wind on its own and some of those very small things. And then, yeah, is it now is quiet because the shower is turned off, then hopefully your attention is drawn to different places where a door might open or close or interesting to see how it changes this space so how it's yeah. creating this new world with the, those fragments or did you test it always like with um, with actual screens or like was it on one screen because now, now when they like all four together it's uh, yeah. creating something different or you're, you're shuffling the order in a way yeah we really it was uh, tricky to figure out how yeah. to film all four at once and yeah. compare them. So we went back and forth, sometimes editing the audio of just one on its own and sometimes kind of laying even four phones or four cameras next to each other to try to understand, okay, what is the relationship of the four? And actually the relationship of the four is how, they, how we made the cut of what not to include. Okay, I'm also supposed to explain this item over here. <laughs> so this is our building that creates a film. <laughs> we continued with this idea of hearing without seeing, so really playing with audio. That inside each of these headphones is uh, dinner sounds, so sounds of eating dinner, eating together, but also different soundtracks. So Every single headphone has a different soundtrack that helps to actually pull out some of the emotions of eating together and conversing with one another. Um, and so we decided that this space would create its own kind of performance, its own kind of film by all three of these people listening to the sounds of dinner 
while looking each other in the face. So now you're at a <laughs> dinner for one. But just the act of hearing and then this kind of relationship between these three people, especially in an unexpected space, a space that many people have been in and sat in a presentation inside of this room and is quite transformed in that way. I, yeah, so this space over here is our building that creates a film. And so inside each of the three headsets is sounds of dinner playing, similar actually to the audio that's in the room, as well as music, kind of dinner music playing at the same time. And so we wanted to have these people look each other in the face as they're listening, especially to three different soundtracks that create different emotions to them that actually the people listening become the performance, especially in a space that is quite familiar but is completely transformed <laughs> by it being a, a, an evening with a few simple pieces. Cool. Yeah. Any other questions? Or Juan, are you going to take this to the next group? <laughs> Am I on? Okay, so we, um, this is really weird not hearing it. Okay, <laughs> so we, we wrote a manifesto, a 14 day manifesto, a manifesto for the, all the days that we were here in Delft at the school uh, with some very, um, very profound and sage advice, we hope. Uh, then we asked uh, the group and uh, we included ourselves within the group to uh, choose a film which contains some kind of reference to architecture or building. So there's a list. And then we did the same thing with, uh, with songs. Um, so there you go. Is that okay? <laughs> hide my water. Are you waiting on the corner? Yeah, I am going to wait on the corner. Um, yeah, thank you for uh, inviting us to work at the Berlaga and uh, thank you for visiting that exhibition. Uh, we had a, a brilliant time here and, and the students were excellent uh, and I hope it was a, uh, well we're very pleased with the, the end result. That'll do. Thank you, Paul. Round of applause for the nice fortnight. Thank you. I, I used your version of English, notice. Exactly, I like it. Alonso. No, no, no. Yeah, you. What was it like to walk the catwalk? What was what? What was it like to walk the catwalk? It's, it, it was good because it wasn't in my scale. <laughs> Unlike him.
Just till I get up, time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading us, and love is all we'll ever trust. Yeah, no, I don't want to waste what's left. And Through the highways, till my shadow turns to sun rays, and I.